Hi, I'm Miles Johnson. Today I'm going to talk to you about underemployment or unemployment uh, when we're calculating child support or maintenance. To calculate child support, the court needs to know what the party's incomes are. And if a party doesn't have a job or is underemployed, uh, there are certain actions that we can take to make sure that the right input is being used for income. Right? So for example, let's say we have father um, who lost their job right, um, three months before the hearing. And we have to show up to the court and ask the court to put father at an income. It can't be just something that, oh, we think he can be making $5,000 per month. There has to be some objective criteria behind that. One of the best ways to get that objective criteria is to hire what's called a vocational expert. This is a person whose job is to determine what people can make and how likely it is that they can make that amount. So what they'll typically do is schedule an interview with the subject, and in our scenario it's father, and talk to father about father's previous work history, um, father's mental and physical capabilities, um, father's education, um, and things of that nature um, to really show what potential father has um, to earn a living. And then they'll take that information and compare it with numerous um, sets of data um, in the local area as to that particular um, subset of skills. Um, so for example, let's say father had gotten laid off from a construction job prior to the hearing, now he's unemployed, we want to figure out, hey, what, what should father be making? What, what should he be making? Um, so they'll compare a person in Adams County, Colorado that's working 40 hours a week um, in a typical construction industry, um, they make $20 per hour. So the vocational expert will look out and say, hey, I see 30 different job openings for people uh, with construction experience similar to fathers. I believe father can reasonably um, secure one of those job openings. Um, or they could look at other different um, areas outside of construction where those skills could also be used. Um, perhaps father could go into an administrative job, um, perhaps based on father's previous education or skill, um, father could be a bank teller or, or anything else, a cake decorator. Um, whatever it is, the vocational expert will lay out at least three or four different job scenarios, show the court the availability um, for those job scenarios, and the likelihood of father securing those job scenarios. So that's the best way, in my opinion, to impute father at wages that he could or should be making. Um, a less optimal way, which happens often with pro se parties, people that aren't um, represented by counsel is they get thrown at minimum wage. It's, hey, a person doesn't have a job, so let's put them at minimum wage and, and keep, keep it moving. Um, that's rarely a good idea, um, especially in this day and age. I mean, even working at, at Burger King, they're paying more than minimum wage, right? So if you don't have anything else to go by, yeah, I guess you could use minimum wage, um, but we would prefer a vocational expert or at least some sort of summary as to historical earnings um, from that individual. Um, and so we've been talking about people that are unemployed. The same goes with underemployment. Um, and this one, you know, oftentimes people think that, oh, they're their ex um, could be making more, should be making more, um, and that's when you really got to prove. Um, the court's not going to just take your word for it that um, they, they're making $5,000 a month in their construction job, but you know they should be out here making $7,000 a month. They're not going to take your word for it. You're certainly going to need some objective criteria, and that vocational expert comes back into play when we're talking about people being underemployed. 
So the next question would be, when can you use this vocational expert or imputation of income? Um, for the most part, you can use it whenever there's a discrepancy or, or concern that the other party is not working or underworking, so to speak. Um, but there's certain situations when you cannot use it. One of the big ones is if a party's caring for a child under 30 months old, you cannot impute them wages. If a person is mentally incapacitated, makes sense, you can't impute them wages. Um, and another one is if someone is incarcerated for more than a year. Right? Someone just going to jail for three months or something like that, they don't qualify for this exemption. It has to be on a long stint um, behind bars. And in that situation, yeah, they can't go out there and apply for these jobs and, and make that money.